Today is history time with the turd and we're going to be talking about mercenaries in the ancient world. How would you go about hiring your own personal mercenary army? How would you become a mercenary? And of course, how do games portray this? Do they do it well enough or do they do it very, very poorly? I guess you'll be surprised. So let's find out. In video games and pop culture, a mercenary is commonly portrayed as a professional soldier, an efficient killing machine and often stronger than the rest of their army, a mysterious and greedy class of people who seek to profit from war. When one thinks of mercenaries, one might think about the medieval mercenary companies who would fight for the highest bidder, but in a classical period, this is not how mercenaries worked at all. Let's first establish what was a mercenary in this time period. A mercenary was a person who was hired by a state or nation for and to themselves. Imagine if a city-state of Athens, for example, were to go to Sparta and hire a Spartan person to fight for Athens. This person would actually be a mercenary, regardless of their martial skills, killing potential or equipment. It is obvious that a trained soldier would be much more valuable than a not trained soldier, and generally speaking, after big wars such as the Peloponnese Wars, there would be an increase in the supply and use of these former soldiers in nearby conflicts. One of the most famous mercenaries in this time period was Xenophon, who actually led an army of mercenaries. They were the 10,000, employed by Cyrus the Younger between 401 and 399 BCE in his attempts to defeat his brother and take the Persian throne. The campaign of the 10,000 ultimately failed, however Xenophon left us with an interesting picture of how to recruit mercenaries, their pay and how were their lives under his mercenary army. It's all on a book written by the general called Anabasis. I don't no, maybe I butchered that name. So, let's start answering some questions. Why would one become a mercenary during the classical period? And there are three main reasons you would do that. One could be simply to be looking for a well-paying job, and contrary to popular belief, battles in the Hellenistic world of the classical age had fairly low casualty rates, and warfare was not as risky as one would think, with casualty rates being around 50% for the losing side of the battle. Wait, 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 50%? No, not 50%, it's 15%. Much better, in it. And battles were far less common than one might think as well, where each war would only have a few large-scale engagements. After war, part of the men from a defeated state or nation could be exiled, pushing some of these into mercenary work as well. And finally, citizen soldiers might take a liking to warfare and be willing to go abroad to fight for other nations, using their knowledge of warfare gained fighting for their own homes and applying those in the employ of a foreign ruler. Hey, it's me again. If you guys like strategy gaming, RPG gaming, if you guys like history, do consider subscribing to the channel. I am pushing to 1000 subscribers at this point. We're a long way ago. So I need everybody to join Team Azate and subscribe to the channel. Consider that and I'll see you guys in the end. All right, so how would you go about recruiting a mercenary army and how could you get recruited into one? There were two main ways one could go about recruiting mercenaries. And depending on the place and period, one way could be way more popular than the other. On the one hand, a rich person could send recruiters with a bag full of money around the world to specific regions from where the rich person would want those mercenaries. As we spoke above, these mercenaries would not necessarily be trained soldiers or even have their own equipment. It was normal for the army they would integrate to provide them with some basic gear. Sometimes gear they would be familiar with and other times not so much. If you were the rich person and wanted a company of Cretan archers, for example, you might send recruiters to Crete and instruct those recruiters to only hire men with excellent archery skills. Or you might be taking in everybody looking for a job in the military, in which case you might have to train them into archery yourself. This was the most popular way to recruit mercenaries at the end of antiquity and the classical period. For example, the Romans would hire mercenaries and make them auxiliary units from these men. The Romans would train them, equip them and give them citizenship at the end of their service. The auxiliary units were essentially mercenaries. They were foreign nationals fighting for Rome. 
The second way you could go about getting mercenaries is through connections, so let me explain this. Let us say you have influence with the garrison captain or someone influential enough in other states, nations or cities. You would give them money for equipment, food and wages and they would train groups of soldiers with their own with the future prospect of joining your army as a unit sort of like in a total war mercenary unit. If you were an individual looking for a mercenary job, however, all you had to do is go to any busy port, look for a recruiter and hope you fill the requirements to join that army. So now let's go to the really important part. How well do video games represent mercenaries? The three main video game franchises that have a mercenary system and that I will be talking about here are Total War, Paradox Games, Empires of Rome more specifically and Mount and Blade. But turd, what do you mean Mount and Blade? It doesn't have mercenaries. Well ladies and gentlemen, Mount and Blade has the most accurate mercenary system of the three. You go into a foreign town and you ask who is willing to join your army for a price. You can either do this or once you have a castle send out recruiters into a certain region to get the mercenaries of your choice. Historically accurate! Adding to that, sometimes lords will ask you to train a certain number of soldiers and give those to them at a later point, trained up. Once again, historically accurate, they are using connections. Well done, Mountain Blade Warband. I'm not sure if this is still accurate for Mountain Blade Bannerlord, but I'm pretty sure it is. However, in both Total War and Paradox, mercenaries are handled in a very gamey way. In Total War, depending on the region, you have a certain pool of mercenaries available, but they come in units and instantly. Close to as if they were mercenary companies, which for the classical period was rare and I haven't seen evidence of this on my research for this video. As such, I'll say it's a big no-no for the most part and if Total War is doing it wrong, oh boy. Paradox is screwing this up completely. Paradox has mercenary armies. Which, yes, it could happen, but there's only one instance of a classical age mercenary army. It's the 10,000. And they were likely assembled using the previous mentioned methods of recruitment. They were not a free mercenary army. More like a Persian army, but all of their soldiers were Greek mercenaries. After Cyrus the Younger died, Xenophon took charge of the 10,000, making them into a proper free mercenary army. They went on to aid Trapezus against Colchis, helping Suthus II to make himself king of Thrace, and then finally they were hired by the Spartans and fought in their wars. I have not seen any evidence of any other free mercenary armies in the ancient world, so the 10,000 was the exception, not the rule that Imperator Rome leads us to believe existed. So paradox, you are super wrong. You are the wrongest regarding mercenaries of all of these game franchises. Let me know if you liked this video by pressing that like button, give me a Portugal caralho in the comments below, and remember to join Team Azeito, of course, by subscribing to the channel and have an amazing day. I'm in Portugal.